Before we delve into the recent agreement, let's journey back in time to understand the historical relationship between Ethiopia and Somaliland. Ethiopia, often referred to as the cradle of civilization, is a landlocked country in the Horn of Africa. It's known for its rich history, diverse cultures, and strategic geopolitical significance. On the other hand, we have Somaliland, a self-declared state that broke away from Somalia after a brutal civil war in 1991. Despite maintaining peace, stability, and functioning democratic institutions, it has struggled for international recognition for the past three decades. The relationship between Ethiopia and Somaliland has been complex, marked by mutual interests and regional dynamics. Understanding this historical context will help us better appreciate the significance of the recent Ethiopia-Somaliland agreement. So strap in as we unpack the intricacies of this groundbreaking deal in the following scenes. The relationship between Ethiopia and Somaliland has been marked by mutual interests and shared challenges. On one hand, we have Ethiopia, a landlocked country that relies heavily on its neighbors for access to maritime routes. Somaliland, with its strategic location on the Gulf of Aden, offers Ethiopia a vital gateway to international trade. On the other hand, Somaliland sees in Ethiopia a powerful ally that can help it gain the much coveted international recognition. In the wider geopolitical landscape of Africa, this relationship serves as a cornerstone for regional stability. The Horn of Africa, a region often marred by conflicts and power struggles, can potentially benefit from a stable partnership between these two actors. Over time, this relationship has evolved, influenced by shifts in regional dynamics and global politics. From cautious engagement in the early years of Somaliland's self-declared independence to increased economic cooperation in the recent years, the ties between Ethiopia and Somaliland have grown stronger. This relationship forms the backdrop against which the recent agreement must be understood. As we delve into the details of this deal in the following scenes, remember that it is not just about ports and trade, but also about recognition, regional stability, and the aspiration for a prosperous future. What could be the potential impacts of the recent Ethiopia-Somaliland agreement? A question that holds a profound significance in the current geopolitical landscape of Africa. The recent agreement between Ethiopia and Somaliland has ignited a spark of hope and perhaps a touch of controversy across the continent. Signed in Addis Ababa, the deal encompasses the leasing of a stretch of Somaliland's coast to Ethiopia. In return, Ethiopia has agreed to recognize Somaliland's sovereignty, a status the breakaway republic has been seeking since its secession from Somalia three decades ago. This agreement holds substantial potential for economic development and regional cooperation, offering benefits to both nations. But as with any diplomatic negotiation, it also brings challenges and requires careful navigation. For Ethiopia, a landlocked country nestled in the heart of Africa, securing access to the sea is not just a necessity, but a lifeline that pulsates with potential. The agreement inked grants Ethiopia a 50-year lease on a naval base, along with the golden ticket to the port of Berbera in Somaliland. This unlocked access to the sea doesn't just signify a geographical advantage, but it opens up the prosperous gateway to international markets, notably Europe, via the strategic Red Sea and the bustling Suez Canal. This geographical convenience places Ethiopia in a prime position for trade, allowing for an influx of goods, increased market competition, and a surge in business opportunities. The ripple effect of this agreement is expected to diversify Ethiopia's trade routes, slicing away its over-reliance on Djibouti. This diversification not only strengthens the country's economic stability, but it also breathes life into new job opportunities, industry growth. But the benefits don't stop there. As Ethiopia engages more with international trade, it potentially boosts the nation's economic growth. Increased trade often translates into an upward trajectory for the GDP, a surge in foreign investment, and a bustling entrepreneurial scene. All of these factors combined could propel Ethiopia's economy into a new era of progress and prosperity. Meanwhile, the deal presents a wealth of opportunities for Somaliland that extend far beyond pure financial gain from leasing the port. Ethiopia's endorsement of Somaliland's long-standing pursuit for formal recognition as an autonomous nation could catalyze a wave of increased international engagement. In practical terms, 
This could attract the attention of numerous global entities, potentially leading to an influx of foreign investment, the setup of international branches of multinational corporations, and the introduction of new industries which could result in a significant boost in job creation in the region. Moreover, this could also invite more diplomatic relations which would further bolster Somaliland's international standing. As a consequence of this, it could ignite the unlocking of a plethora of economic possibilities, propelling the region towards growth and prosperity. Furthermore, the considerable move to give Somaliland a share in the state-owned Ethiopian Airlines serves as a testament to the growing economic cooperation between the two. This collaboration not only solidifies their partnership, but also sets the stage for a surge in the region's economic growth, setting the wheels in motion for a future teeming with opportunities and development. But the agreement's potential does not limit itself to the boundaries of the two countries involved. It has the profound potential to spur regional development and stability. It could do so by paving the way for increased cooperation between the nations in the region, promoting non-hostile dialogues and fostering bilateral and multilateral relationships on various levels. This could lead to a more harmonious atmosphere where disputes are resolved peacefully rather than through conflicts. The agreement also holds the promise of bolstering economic growth. By encouraging trade and investment within the region, it can economic activities, create job opportunities, and raise living standards. The windfall could be particularly significant in sectors such as agriculture, manufacturing, and services, which could see a surge in cross-border operations. Moreover, the deal could serve as a beacon of hope for the wider Horn of Africa, an area often caught in the crossfire of clashes and instability. By fostering cooperation and mutual benefit, the deal could play a pivotal role in curbing those conflicts and nurturing stability. It could transform the narrative of the region from one marked by strife to one defined by unity and shared prosperity. Even so, the agreement is fraught with numerous complex challenges. The bone of contention between Somalia and Somaliland over the latter's pursuit for independence has been a deeply entrenched issue clouded with historical grievances and political friction. The recent deal has poured fuel on an already simmering fire, escalating these tensions exponentially. Somalia perceives this as a flagrant violation of its sovereignty, a blatant disregard for its status and rights as a nation. This discord poses a significant and multifaceted hurdle to the potential shared economic growth and regional cooperation that the agreement could engender. Firstly, it threatens to destabilize the fragile local economy, throwing the livelihoods of countless locals into jeopardy. The unchecked escalation of this dispute could potentially result in violence, thereby jeopardizing the safety and security of local communities. Furthermore, the role of international actors cannot be underplayed in this scenario. Their influence, both overt and covert, could serve to either exacerbate the conflict or pave the way towards a resolution. This makes the role of diplomatic negotiations absolutely pivotal. The situation calls for calm, tactful diplomacy and a genuine commitment to peaceful resolution from all parties involved. Only through open dialogue, mutual respect, and a spirit of compromise can this deeply rooted disagreement be effectively addressed and hopefully resolved. The Ethiopia-Somaliland agreement, while promising, necessitates meticulous management. It is vital for all parties involved to seek harmonious resolutions and circumvent actions that could fuel tensions. But the path forward is not without its complexities. It will require more than just patience, dialogue, and cooperation from the parties directly involved. International support, as well, will play a critical role in the successful implementation of this agreement. The community's endorsement and assistance can provide much-needed impetus and create an environment conducive to constructive dialogue. The application of effective diplomacy is another vital component. Diplomacy serves as the bridge, connecting various interests and facilitating understanding among the parties. It can help to build trust, foster cooperation, and ultimately ensure the successful execution of the agreement. The potential for economic and social development is tremendous. The agreement could stimulate growth, create jobs, and foster social cohesion, which could, in turn, lead to a more stable region. 
emphasizing open dialogue, fostering cooperation, and crafting mutually beneficial agreements will be the linchpin in realizing the full spectrum of advantages that this deal proposes. To encapsulate, the recent Ethiopia-Somaliland agreement harbors a multitude of opportunities for economic development, regional stability, and the reinforcement of ties between nations. It is a vivid demonstration of the potential of African resources to serve the interests of African people and a stride towards a more interconnected and affluent continent. However, navigating the road to these benefits is teeming with hurdles, and it will mandate not just patience, dialogue, and cooperation from all involved, but also substantial international support and diplomatic proficiency.